Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Break Talos Principle 2, the only series where I'm running out of intro jokes alarmingly quickly. So today we're going to be doing North 2, the Flooded Valley, and we're going to just go and do number 2 first. Uh, I just wanted to go over my thought process for breaking this one real quick, uh, just because a lot of these simpler puzzles are really hard to break. And the reason for that is there's often so few moving parts in them that it's really hard to find any other way of solving them. Um, so my first thought was, can I do it without any lasers? And the answer is kind of. You can bring a box to the back there and just jump into the pedestal room, but that's kind of boring, so I abandoned that idea. And then I thought, okay, so if I have to use the lasers, can I at least avoid the puzzly part of it? So a naive player might just try something like this, and then discover that these lasers collide. You can't use this layout. You have to try to figure out how to combine them to be able to get all the lasers to connect. So I thought, maybe I could just avoid the puzzle solving part of it. And I noticed there's some parts of snow that are higher here. So maybe if I put like an accumulator there and then the RGB converter right next to it below it, that the lasers would not collide. And unfortunately, even though they are slightly vertically offset, they still collide. And there's just no way you can arrange these for that to work. So I thought maybe if there's no land that's high enough, maybe there's something else I can put it on. And there are these like little slopes or these uh, ledges right here. Unfortunately, they're just too small to hold an item. They just fall off pretty much immediately. It doesn't give you enough time. Uh, so I thought maybe I can hold it up there. If I put the accumulator here, or the uh, RGB converter here, will it stay up there? And the answer is no, it still falls off. However, it does take a little bit longer to fall. And because there's like a grace period on things disconnecting, if I keep it up here just long enough, I think I've got to move this to the right more, right there. Uh, the gate will stay open just long enough for us to be able to get through it. See? Just like that. And now that we're locked in here, the only thing we can do is to finish the puzzle off. And I've noticed a lot of areas have these uh, unique quirks to them. Uh, maybe it's like a piece of geometry that's reused throughout the area. And in this case, uh, for North 2, it's these like leafy slopes. If you jump on these in just the right way, you can just get right over them. So anytime we see a leafy slope like this, we know that we can walk on it. Now, speaking of puzzles that are so simple they're almost impossible to cheese, we're going to be heading to number one next. I think number one took me the longest out of any puzzle in this area just because it's so ridiculously simple that it's almost impossible, again, to find a way to do it unintentionally. But I did find a way that technically cheeses it, and technical cheese is the best kind of cheese. So if we bring our own red accumulator in here, we can just open the gate here, and we can just walk the other red, red accumulator right through. Normally we would have to hold the gate open from the other side to bring it through, but in this case 1k doesn't even need to be smart enough to do that. All he's got to do is this, and it's solved. Now with that out of the way, we're just going to bring this accumulator with us. We're just going to bring it on over to number three next. And again, we can just jump on this slope. There we go. Alright, meet you over at number three. Alright, and now that we're in number three, um, I'm going to show off a very interesting quirk in how boxes and fans behave. I don't remember if I've actually exploited this uh, in any previous areas yet, but anyway, if you jump into a fan at the same time you place a box on it, uh, lots of really weird things happen. So you'll notice when you jump on a fan, you're kind of locked into a specific trajectory and this prevents you from like just jumping up onto a wall. However, if you place a box onto the fan right as you get onto it, you can get kind of knocked off of that trajectory and you can just have full air control. So, for example, I can get up onto that left ledge by just doing this. So we're going to use that to our advantage here and just solve the puzzle. And we're going to go ahead and just turn this accumulator red as well. Okay. And then there's another thing you can do with box fans that we're not going to use yet. Uh, but if you 
it kind of all depends on the timing of when you place the box on the fan. But if you do it just right, you can often... Oh, that was a bad one. You can often uh, get launched way up into the air. And we'll definitely see that in the next video. Um, there's a couple of puzzles where I exploit something like that. But we don't really need it in this puzzle, so I don't think I'm going to bother. So what we're going to do is we're going to place these right on this little raised bit of snow. And these bits are just high enough to be able to grab them from the top of the wall. So let's just go ahead and get up here. You know what? I can find a more direct route. It's actually really fun once you get good at the, uh, I call it, fan surfing. Uh, once you get good at it, you can just kind of put yourself wherever you want. It's really fun to just fly through the air like that. So we're just going to creep down just low enough to be able to grab these items. The accumulator. I actually don't remember if we need this accumulator out there because we brought the red one from number one. But just in case, I'm going to leave it out there. And then we're going to bring the jammer all the way to the top. Ooh, almost fell off. That would have been bad. All the way up top here. And then if we look right over into this direction at puzzle number four, there's one little tiny bit of a gate that you can jam. And we're going to do that. We're just going to confirm that it's actually jamming, because there's the purple coming out of the front there. Sometimes when you uh, click to jam, it just decides not to, so I always confirm that it actually is. And then once that's all done, we're just going to come out here, and we're going to bring one of the red accumulators, and we're going to drop it off by number four and head over to number eight. Alright, so the solution to number 8 on paper is very simple, but this is probably the hardest trick I've had to do up to this point so far. So if you jump right up here on top of this, um, as you remember from the last episode, there's these little like corners on these uh, models, these specific things that you can jump on. And we're just going to have to get up on top of one of them. And this is probably going to take a lot of attempts, so I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through this. And then we just need to jump up on top like that. That was actually much quicker than I've ever done that before. I'm very proud of myself. So we're just going to have to jump over here and solve it. And with that out of the way, we've just got to use this box to free up that accumulator in there. I'm just going to go ahead, I think I need to turn this, yes, I need to make it red first. Perfect. And then exploiting slopes once more. It's kind of the uh, theme of this area, I guess, is exploiting slopes. We're going to leave that right there and go get our box. Oop. Okay. Using that, we can jump up here. Okay, let me move this over. That beam right there, I keep hitting my head on it. Much better. And we're just going to leave this right up top, right there for later use. And then make sure we drop our box outside the puzzle, because we will need it later. We're just going to go ahead and leave it right there. Next, we're going to run over to number five. And once again, we will be exploiting boxes and fans. We'll be doing a little bit of fan surfing here. So we just throw that over, bring this, place this on top of the inactive fan, connect that there to power it. And there we go. I just need to be able to get to the other side without getting knocked off. There we go. And then if you get the timing on this just right, you can get launched up onto that wall like so. Oh, that was the wrong one. That's, uh, if you jump in just after the box leaves it, you can get knocked onto this wall right here. And we can use this to get over to the end, which we're actually going to do right now. Forgot that we have to do that first.
All right. Let's go ahead and solve that. And then for this timing, we just want to leave just after it hits the other fan. And using that, we can get knocked up here. See what I mean once you get used to this uh, fan surfing stuff? It's really fun to get the timing right and to just be able to put yourself basically anywhere you want. So we're just going to kind of just hang over the edge here and then we can reach this. And we're going to grab the box first, just because it is hilarious that you can do this, because this is not supposed to be possible in the game. If you try to put a, anything like that on a fan, it just gets knocked off to the side. So I love this visual here. And then once that's up, we just need to grab the accumulator next. There we go. And then using that handy dandy red accumulator that we put up on top of eight, we're just going to turn this into a red one. And I hope I'm going to get the uh, positioning right for this. I think if we leave this right here and put this on top of it, that should work. And then we're just going to leave and we're going to head back to four now. And with the jammer that we set up on top of number three and the red accumulator that we set up on top of number five, we're going to make number four very simple. So all we need to do now is just take this connector, bring it through this open gate. And then it's very precise positioning here. But if we connect the red accumulator there to that receptacle and put it right about there. There we go. Just barely possible. All right, now after that, we're gonna take this accumulator that we left here and we're gonna bring it to the Southern Lost Puzzle, which I believe is right around the back side here. Now? Yep. Why did you upload a picture of your hand? Why do you care that my hand is in the picture? Your hand isn't in the picture, it is the picture. I like it. It's very artistic. Let's stay professional, everyone. Okay, and now that we're here, I had to think about that for a minute because I couldn't remember which puzzle this was at first. It's been like a week and a half since I routed this out, so I'm a little bit rusty, but all we got to do is just jump this over the wall here. Again, because there's leaves on here, we can jump up. I don't know if it's the actual leaf, leaf model itself that's causing that, or if it's just the slope on this type of model happens to work. But with these in tow, it's very trivial to just connect all these together. There we go. So way back in one of the earlier episodes, and I was talking about how they fixed some exploits in 1.1, 1 .1, uh, this area, not this puzzle specifically, but over in puzzle number three where we were doing the box fan jumping, um, there's a hole in the wall, like these square cutouts that you could just throw items through. And that was one of the very few things that I noticed they actually did fix in 1.1, 1 .1, so I was a little disappointed. Um, but weirdly enough, they did not fix uh, all of them. For example, you can still just kind of drop these through. If I like place them here, for example. Actually, which ones do we need to bring out? Red accumulator, okay. Yeah, so for example, if we run all the way outside the back here. This one is not fixed. You can still grab things through here. And I just wonder why they fixed some holes in walls, but didn't bother to fix all of them. I'm not sure. So anyway, with this in tow, we are going to run over to number six next. And then we're also going to need the box that we left outside of number eight, so I'll be right back with that. Oh yeah, I just wanted to point out real quick. So the uh, entrance to the lab is right down there, but the volume that defines like how the lighting acts uh, extends a little bit above the ceiling. 
So when we stand right here, it makes it super bright because it thinks we're about to walk out of the lab into the bright outdoors. So I just thought that was kind of funny. It just gets really bright on top of this hill for no reason. Okay. I remember number six being one of the harder puzzles for me, so it's always nice to be able to get my revenge and just break it in an unfairly simple manner. So if we leave that right there, we can drop that in. I don't remember if we need the box in here. No, we do not. Okay, so this is all we need. So if I remember right, Oh, you know what? I think I did break it. I was supposed to just drop it in and not myself. Because I believe now I am completely soft locked here. So that is unfortunate. Okay, I will be right back. I'm going to have to reset this and bring these items back here real quick. Okay, now let's do this the right way. Pop that there, and then drop this in. Do not get myself stuck again. Funnily enough, I uh, ended up just a little bit lost there after I reset, because I was expecting it to put me at the beginning of 6, but I never actually walked through the screen like this, so it actually reset me way back to, I think, the south puzzle, way over on the other side there. Um, yeah, sometimes weird things happen when you don't enter puzzles the way they expect you to. So anyway, all we've got to do is just put that there. And then I believe... Oh yeah, just got to convert or connect that to there. Nope, right there. I'll put this on the button. And we just take our red right over here. Open that part. And then, oh yeah, this one, there we go. I knew there was another thing here. And just put this right there. Oh, actually, no, we need this, oh yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm getting a little mixed up here. Take that there, connect that to that. And then just give ourselves enough room to put this right there. After connecting it, of course. There we go. It was actually just a little bit of puzzle solving, but it's nothing like what the whole puzzle takes. So I'll take it. And now that that's done, we actually do need to reset here. Alright, and I will need to go back to number 8. I'm going to need the accumulator from there. I'm also going to grab the accumulator from number... Five, and we're going to bring them both over to number seven. So I'll be right back. Alright, here we are, and with two uh, accumulators outside the puzzle, this is going to be very simple. So I believe I need to... Yep, we're going to connect these two to the blue. Not to that one. And we actually need to turn this one green real quick, so let's just go ahead and get that. And we'll connect those to the outside. Again, not to that one. And then we've just got to turn this one red. And put it right in the middle. And there we go. I love the look of uh, tons of lasers all next to each other like this. And I believe that leaves us with only one more puzzle. That is the Western Lost Puzzle. It's right over there. And we're going to need three boxes. So I'm going to have to get... I don't remember where the boxes are, but I will be right back. I'm going to have to go grab those.
All right, there's one box of three done. I'm going to get the next one over from number eight again. That's a very useful box. We use that in a lot of stuff, don't we? And there's two boxes down. And our last box is going to be in number three. Um, we're going to have to do a kind of a fairly difficult trick of getting that box out of there. You'll see once we get there. Oh yeah, so right over here, these are the holes that I was talking about earlier. You used to be able to just grab things right through there, and that sure would make this easier. But unfortunately, they did patch these holes, and I think they patched any this whole model as a whole, uh, because anything that has holes like this just doesn't work anymore. So anyway, the uh, trick I was talking about, again, we will be doing a little bit of fan surfing. Except this time we need to bring the box with us, and that's a little bit of a tricky proposition. The best way I've found to do it is to uh, fan surf up onto that ledge up there, and then as the box is flying past you, you need to grab it. Um, so I'm probably going to end up fast forwarding through this unless I somehow miraculously get it on the first try. So uh, here we go. All right, and there we go. I unfortunately did not get it on the first try, but oh well. So let's just run this over to the west uh, lost puzzle there and finish this area off. All right, and here is uh, box number three. So we're just gonna bring this into the puzzle with us. That's going to make this vastly easier, uh, if I can remember how to do this. So we want to bring the accumulator with us. Yes, there we go. Took a second to remember there. And with this box in tow, we have something to open the last gate with us, which is normally the uh, whole point of the puzzle is that you can't... Oh, I need to actually color this first. There we go. Okay, so just connect that there place that there and there's the final puzzle unfortunately due to bad timing on my part i have to run to work now but i will be back afterward to get all the easter eggs and stuff and start wrapping this episode up so i'll see you guys in just a second all right i'm back so let's go ahead and get these prometheus sparks out of the way before we do the easter eggs i'm just going to go ahead and grab this box for reasons that will become apparent once we get to the first one and it is right down here along the coastline. So what they want us to do is to jump up here, go up there and do this uh, jumping puzzle to get over to the spark. Uh, 1K naturally has an intense aversion to doing jumping puzzles, so he's just going to go ahead and get up here instead. See, wasn't that much simpler than that dreaded jumping puzzle. And our next one is going to be way over on the other side of the map, on the other side of three. And it is right here. Now this kind of is a jumping puzzle, but there's really no way up other than to just jump up on here, so it's not really much of a puzzle. And with that out of the way, we're going to go start getting the Easter eggs. So the first one is going to be on right over there. I really don't like the layout of this area. It forces you to 
make these long, weird paths between puzzles. You can't just run directly to things, you've got to go around the water. So our first one is right here, and it is one of these lost hologram things, and it's just a piano. Alright, with that out of the way, our next one is going to be over behind number four. And here it is. I thought I was looking for uh, the next one first, but it's actually the hatchet. Just like we saw in East 2, I think it was. Okay, next one is going to be right on the back side of number 5. So to get to this one, we've just got to do a slightly careful jumping around the back side here. And this is surrounded by dangerous water. Uh, every once in a... Yep, just like that. I think we can get up here. Alright, that is not what I meant to do. Let's head back on over to number 5 here. Actually, while we're over here, let's go ahead and get this Easter egg here because it's uh, a lot closer. So this one's right over here along the shoreline where we will find more snowmen. I'm going to pop up a picture that I took here. Um, I kind of like doing that. I've been doing it the last few episodes where I'll take one of the Easter eggs and I'll kind of doctor it up in a really, really cool picture. So uh, here it is. Okay. Now let's go back and get that one on number five without dying this time. Okay, now being a little more careful. Yeah, every time you jump, you kind of hit one of these lips and it likes to throw you off into the water, so you have to be really careful with that. And right around the back side, we've got a poster. This, I believe, yeah, this is from Sirius Sam. Um, I think that's like the company that Sam works for, I believe. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's how it goes. And we only have two more Easter eggs, and they're both right in front of the tower. So let's go ahead and solve that Tetramino Bridge first. So we're taking a little detour here. Uh, this didn't end up being useful in this area, so I never ended up doing it as part of like the puzzle breaking process. I just wanted to show off that you can actually smuggle items into this gold puzzle here, right through these walls. Um, I will be doing an episode at the very end of the series where we go and we also cheese all the gold puzzles, and we'll almost certainly be doing this as part of that. I don't know yet because I haven't actually started that process, but I'm sure it'll be much uh, easier to solve once we get some items in there. Okay, so anyway, back onto the bridge. And our penultimate Easter egg is going to be right over here. We've just got to do a little bit of jumping to get around to that corner right there over the water. Just going to hop up on here. And these are a little bit tricky. you got to make sure you don't hit these posts here. So it kind of helps to jump, like, kind of around corners like that. This one's the easier one, but there's another one on the other side for the other Easter egg that's a little bit trickier. And we just hop up on here. And there we go. It is Crow Team's very first, I think it's their very first game, Football Glory 4. Definitely a real game. Definitely not made up. Alright. Let's get back onto dry land.
And as is tradition, one of the Easter eggs in our last remaining one for this area is a little hidden kitty face. And again, as is tradition, it is pretty much impossible to get to uh, in person. I'm sure there's a way. I'm just not going to bother with that right now. And we will have to use photo mode to see it. Now, like I said, this one's a little bit trickier because these posts um, kind of get in the way a little bit more. So I find it's easier to kind of jump, take it a little bit wide like that. All right, so we're going to hop into photo mode here. That's right around, let me make this faster, on the back side of this little thing right here. Yep, there it is. Okay. Let's go ahead and get that tower out of the way. And that's going to do it for Episode 7 of Let's Break Talos Principle 2. As always, if you have anything to say, any feedback, anything like that, just leave a comment. I love reading them. Uh, meet me next time as we tackle North 3, The Lost Marshes. Peace. Ah, uh, I actually grabbed it. Where did it go? Um, last time this happened, something magical happened. I really hope it happened again. Oh my god, how did it end up back here? <laughs>